For this assignment, we're going to be learning about color mixing. Um, we're going to start color mixing, and just as a review, back in first and second grade, we learned about the secondary colors. The secondary colors are orange, violet, and green. And what we did is we did what was called paint mixing. We took our two primary colors, mixed them together, and got orange, hopefully. We took our blue, red, mixed them together, and we got violet. We took blue and magenta, and we got like a warmer lavender violet. And then we took our blue and our yellow, and we mixed them together to get green. I said that the, you know, the weakest color was over on the left, and the strongest color was over on the right, and that you would mix um, a little teeny bit of the strong color into the weak color to get this middle color, right? Now, we're moving on up in the world, and it's third grade, and we're doing what's called intermediate colors. And um, I have a nice color wheel here for you, or if you want to look at the color wheel at the side of the room, you may as well. Um, we have our primary colors, red, yellow, blue. We have our secondary colors in between our two primary colors. So red and blue in between is violet. Red and yellow in between is orange, secondary. Yellow and green, sorry, yellow and blue in between is green, our secondary color. Now, if we look further, if we look between red and orange, we have what's called red-orange. And that is called an intermediate color, or some people call it a tertiary color. And it's kind of the third ring out. So if you look at the, um, the color wheel, the side of the room over there, um, you will see that um, I have those other little wedges that are kind of off the side. Those ones are tertiary colors. Now red-orange, some people might call that scarlet. Yellow-orange, I like to call it school bus yellow. Um, Yellow-green, some people call it you know lime-green. Blue-green is usually referred to as turquoise. Um, blue-violet, you know, I don't know, I'd call it blue-violet. And um, red-violet is sometimes called magenta, even though it's not magenta. Magenta is its own specific color, but red-violet is kind of a um, you know magenta-like <laughs> color. Um, sometimes it's called rose or rose matter. Anyways, um, what we're going to do today is we're going to be mixing the intermediate colors. So you're going to get a paint chart that looks like this. It looks a little confusing at first, but it's really quite simple. It follows the same format as the one we did in first and second grade. It's got yellow, red, yellow, just like this one, yellow, red, magenta, yellow. And it's got red, blue, 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 red, blue, blue, blue. Same thing, right in the middle. You can see I've got the secondary colors, orange, violet, and green. Okay, but I've added red orange and yellow orange. I've added red violet and blue violet. I've added yellow green and blue green. And you're going to mix all of those colors as you go through the project. So first things first, put your name, Mr. Lundgren, that's me, right? You're going to put your name. And then put your homeroom teacher. Let's say this is third grade wired. OK, so we know who and what class you're in. Then getting your paint materials set up, you're going to need a palette. You're going to need a palette paper. So take a, a paper towel, open it up all the way, fold it in half instead of thirds, lay it on your palette. Okay, You should have what's called a quarter inch easel brush. It looks like this. It should have a 1 fourth right here or quarter mark right there and it's about this big it's about as big as two two swatches there you should have an empty cup for your dirty water clean cup for your clean water a little bitty water cup for your clean fresh personal water and then you're gonna get started I like to take my brush and just um, get a little bit of water onto my palette so it doesn't soak up all the paint water okay kinda like that and then we're going to get started. You should also have a uh, uh, paper towel over here to kind of wipe your brush on as we go through the process. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to start with red and yellow. Okay, and you always start with what? The weakest color first. So between the two, our weakest color is yellow. You're going to paint just like you read from left to right. So you're going to get a little paint on your brush. And remember, this is tempera paint. It should be thick and rich. It should not be watery and thin and transparent like watercolor. It should be thick. Okay. So there is my yellow. 
nice and simple. Then right here in this empty space, we're going to take a big blob of our yellow. I'm going to put it in the middle. Okay, so there's a little blob of yellow. And you're going to take a little teeny pinprick of red. You can kind of see it there on my brush. Just a little pinprick of red, and we're going to mix it in to this yellow. And we're going to make something that's pretty much yellow, but it just has that teeny hint of red. Okay. Mix it thoroughly on your palette paper. Mix it so that it's very all the way mixed through. You can't see any red left over. And you're going to take that reddish, yellowish. Oh boy, you can hardly even see the difference. Maybe a little pinprick more. Okay, that's a little better. So I'm going to mix that up really well and paint that up over the top. Okay. So here's my before yellow orange. I'm going to take another little pin prick of red, put it in here, mix it around. And so you're noticing that I just take a little pin prick of red each time and add it into my pile. And this should be a little bit more to the orange side. Good. It's still kind of yellowy though. It's not the orange out of the tube. Okay, so there's my yellow orange. I'm going to take a little pinprick of red more. Notice I got a little bit off my brush there because I didn't want so much red. I thought it was a little too, too little too much on the red side. And I'm going to paint that right in here where it's right before orange. Okay. Then I'm going to take a little bit more red and put it in and this should be our orange color. This is, if we were taking orange out of the tube, should be pretty darn close to the orange out of the tube. Okay. Now, I can tell the orange out of the tube and I can tell the orange that you mix and I want to see an orange that you mix. Okay. This is the orange that you mix. It's a little less intense than the orange out of the tube just because that's how pigment works. If you're mixing, it's a little less intense. Whereas if you buy it from the company, it's a little more intense. And here is the orange right out of the tube. It's kind of hard to see the difference, but I can tell. I've got a trained enough eye that I can tell the difference. So please do not use the orange out of the tube. I'm going to move on from orange. I'm going to add a little more red here. Okay, and get a little bit to the more red side and add that one on. Okay, add a little bit more red. I'm moving quicker now because I think you get the idea. Okay, that one's a little bit more orange red. I'm going to add just a little more red now. Our last one before we get all the way to red. You can hardly see the difference. It's just ever so slight. And now I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to swipe off all the orange red. I'm going to dip right into my red pile and take pure red and put pure red right on the red section to finish in. Okay, so that is how you do the first line of your color mixing from yellow all the way to red including your secondary color and your two intermediate colors orange yellow and red orange once you're done take your brush wash it in your personal water cup so it's nice and clean and ready for the next section dry your brush there should be no paint left on it it should be nice and clean Take your old icky water, dump it in the dirty water cup, get a new fresh set of water, okay, and get ready for the next line.